What's cracking big dough hoax? It's a very important video. A lot of y'all are drafting soon. Draft season is upon us. NFL is happening. Fantasy football is happening. Underdog fantasy has been happening. It's literally the number one. I've come to the conclusion this is the sharpest ADP on the interwebs. Underdogfantasy.com has the legitimate sharpest ADP on the internet average draft position and it is very very difficult to draft a good team it's starting to piss me off to be honest with you it's starting to get me a little upset we're not going to yell about it I might have already went above the decibel volume for the requirements of my videos but here we are lo and behold underdogfantasy.com download the app they have a beautiful 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 app I'm drafting from the 105 spot this is wonderful here's what I do I join these drafts and then I throw the link into the Discord channel, okay? And uh, here we go. I throw the link into the Discord channel, and y'all end up drafting with me. I think the reason these ADPs are so shop is because a lot of you guys in my audience draft on Fantasy Underdog, underdogfantasy.com, as well as, you know, they're partnered up with, like, Establish the Run and a bunch of other brands and stuff who bring their audiences into draft. So this ain't no damn fantasy football calculator. This ain't no sites like that. This is the real deal. This is the number one place to prep for your fantasy football season. Okay? So when you sign up, you can see in that little yellow box on the screen, the download link for the app will be in the description as well as the pinned comment in the comment section. While you're down there, make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy the video. So this is a 12-team mock draft, half PPR. I'm picking from the 105 spot. And I love, I love me the 105 spot. Here's the way I'm looking at it. I actually kind of like most of the spots. I think the spots that I like the least might be the one. Actually, there's no spot I don't like because the way I look at the top five picks is there's an elite running back tier. You have this guy's going to time out and take C-Mac. So good for you. You know, there should be a rule where if you time out in a draft, especially a money draft. So these drafts are three dollars a piece. OK, so maybe you want to do a free. You can stick to like the draft wizard on fantasy pros. But that's why these ADPs are so competitive, because you're putting down $3 to draft. Now, this is not $3 to mock draft. This is an actual league itself, right? So if you win the league or if you come within the top three places, you do win money, okay? So this is not just drafting for $3 and losing your $3. This is not only the best prep for a very, 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 very small price, but you're getting a draft practice against dudes that also put money down so they're taking it seriously clearly none of these guys are taking it seriously and it's wildly disrespectful so we have two timeouts anyone who times out should get a guy that's 30 fucking picks later on the adp i'm already cursing i'm already ruining the youtube algorithm here we go this is going to be a long video so buckle in tuck your shirts in I, I, you know what i should get i should get a custom chair with a buckle around it so we can fucking buckle in for these videos we can tuck our shirts in we can stop yelling and we're about to eat so we're going to have three timeouts in a row. Now, the top tier of running backs, we have C-Mac, we have Barkley, we have Ezekiel Elliott, and I'm assuming Alvin Kamara is going to go off the board. So that leaves me at the five spot. And there are a lot of good running backs there. You could see the ADPs. Look at the ADPs. The first 12, 13 guys are literally straight running backs. Michael Thomas does not go until, oh no, you know what? I messed around with the rankings. So these are actually my rankings. But uh that being said, like Derrick Henry's the next guy off the board for me. Some of you guys will be asking about Dalvin Cook. The Dalvin Cook situation, this is something I've been saying for a while. He's been ranked, you know, at the 9, 10, 11 spot for a while. No one's debating his upside. No one's debating Dalvin Cook's upside because we saw what it was last year. Even in the 14 games he played, yes, he was, you know, he didn't win the championship for you, but he got you to the championship for the most part. He's one of those league winning running backs that averages over 20 fantasy points per game and if you're new to the channel by the way like if, if you do like the content i know mock drafts bring in a lot of new eyes to the channel i've been putting out videos five six days a week for the last like two months and there are a lot of good videos that will probably help you out for your draft that are coming up in the next couple of days i had a video in which i looked at league winning running backs and what makes up a league winning running back right someone who averages 20 fantasy points per game or more over the course of the season so dalvin cook was basically right there last year but we're hearing these reports that adam schefter said all right this was a video that came out from matt berry talking about what adam schefter said about dalvin cook and adam schefter's a big fantasy guy and he said that if dalvin cook i think it goes into like next week if he doesn't come away with the contract extension 
he would be very weary, wary, weary. Someone corrected me the other day. Weary apparently is not wary. Very wary, and I do say it every single video. So now you got me. Now you got me in my subconscious. You got me fucking, um, I'm falling apart over here. He would be hesitant to pull the trigger on Dalvin Cook. And when you have a ton of studs at the running back position, even going back to Josh Jacobs, Miles Sanders, Kenyon Drakes, whatever, that would make me put Dalvin Cook all the way in the back. All the way in the bike, because you consider his injury history. He's a guy who's never been able to finish a season strongly. And now you consider this contract thing, which is still very much up in the air. So he becomes like the back of the tier running backs for me. So when I'm in the one, one, one through the one five spot, the running backs are easy, right? Just, just mix and max, whatever it is. C-Max, Saquon, uh, Alvin Kamara, Ezekiel Elliott, Derrick Henry. If you want my actual rankings, you'll have to get them from the draft guide, bigdogsdraftguide.com or through monkeyknifefight.com. But the bigger picture here is Dalvin Cook becomes very risky. Like you can lose your fantasy drafts within the first couple rounds. So I tend to go very risk averse. And Derrick Henry is about as risk averse as you can get within the first few picks. I know Animals, Animals asses, he has the 104 in our E-Town Get Down League. So he will be taking Derrick Henry at the 104. I'm almost positive about that. He will skip over. He doesn't want to make the same mistake twice with Alvin Kamara. I think this time around, Alvin Kamara is going to be the mistake that he does make by not taking him. Anyways, Derrick Henry at the 105 seems like a smash spot. And after Henry, we did see Dalvin Cook go off the board two spots later. We had Clyde before him, which I don't, uh, which I don't not recommend. We had Joe Mixon right after him. Mixon's a guy that's at the back of the tier for me as well. Jacob Sanders are ahead of him for me. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking. I moved Sanders back up in my rankings because, I mean, every report out of Philly, yes, I don't always believe like the beat reporters, but again, where there's smoke, there's fire. We are hearing... He's good to go. He's good to go from coaches, from players, from himself, from beat reporters. Like there seems to be no cause for concern, which again, I don't necessarily buy into. I like to take the advice of people who actually know what the fuck they're talking about when it comes to human physiology and biology and anatomy. But we have guys like Dr. Jesse Morse. We have guys like Edwin Porras who are actual PT guys or doctors within the fantasy space, and they're not worried about it. Dr. Morse said he would still take Sanders around the one six to the one eight range. So unless we learn anything more, which hasn't been a big uh, problem for us thus far, then uh, then we're going to be good with Miles Sanders there. And then Josh Jacobs, I'm not really worried about Theo Riddick getting signed here. So this is where it gets tricky. This is where it gets tricky because all the top running backs are off the board. Most of the top wide receivers are off the board too. And now we're looking at something like a Lamar Jackson-esque player or like a Chris Godwin. Now I'm, I'm all in on Chris Godwin this year as a back end of the second round pick. I did take him over Aaron Jones. A lot of people are still on the Aaron Jones bandwagon. And I think he could have a nice year, but I think more often than not, we're going to get a lot of like mid to high end RB2 games. And I would rather have someone that I know is solidified at their position, right? Like I don't, I don't want to take Aaron Jones in the second round when I would even probably take Lamar Jackson over Aaron Jones in a one quarterback league. And I said this in my previous videos uh, in the must own quarterbacks video that went out on Tuesday. I talked about strategy. I talked about not only like the players that I really like, but I talked about strategy at the quarterback position in both one quarterback and super flex league. So if you missed that, just go back to my channel to Tuesday's video. And I'm coming, I'm coming around more so to the fact that I like Lamar Jackson in one quarterback leagues at the end of the second, early third round. It's just a pick you're not going to regret. And once all those elite running backs are off the board, once the top wide receivers are off the board, you see where I ended up. Like Godwin's probably the tier right outside of Julio Jones and Tyreek Hill. We don't exactly know what kind of chemistry we're going to get between Brady and Godwin. But I do think that Godwin is like the key cog in this Tampa Bay offense. And so you're just hearing reports every single day out of Tampa Bay where it's just like, the glowing reports from Tom Brady, but one time it's just like, oh, Evan seems to be his top guy. Then it's like Chris Godwin had a fabulous fucking practice. Oh, Ronald Jones can't catch the ball. Wait, no, never mind. Ronald Jones caught everything today. All the other running backs are dropped. It's really out of control. So I'm just going to go with what we know. And what we know is that Bruce Arians absolutely loves Chris Godwin. He loved him going into last year. He made him the focal point of that passing game. And now Tom Brady is going to fixate on a guy like Chris Godwin, like he did with Julian Edelman, right? Julian Edelman, 152 targets, I want to say, last year, fourth in the NFL, behind only Julio, Michael Thomas, and Allen Robinson. Julian Edelman was next. Chris Godwin is in for a monster year. That offense is going to be humming along, and that means Tom Brady is going to put up probably 30 touchdowns or so, and Chris Godwin is going to be the recipient of a lot of those. So now we're at the back, we're in the mid-third round, and... This again, like it, it kind of stinks being in the early parts of the draft. Like a lot of people ask me, what's the best place to draft from? And I like the back end of the first round because you're you're almost definitely getting two running backs that you love. 
mid third round is probably early for any of these running backs on the board. Lamar Jackson is still on the board. Okay, so we're just going to go with Lamar Jackson. We're not going to look bite, right? Again, that's that's a pick you're not going to regret because Lamar Jackson has legitimate weak winning upside all the time. And the difference between guys, if you've never drafted an underdog, I should have prefaced with this. This is a best ball draft. So it's still obviously you're seeing draft picks that are very relevant. And this is pretty much exactly how your normal draft would go. But what best ball does is you're only doing drafts, right? So this is perfect if you don't want to actually bring more leagues onto your shit. Like I already have like eight leagues, so I can't say yes to any more leagues. But for this, all you do is draft. You're only drafting. You don't do any in-season waiver wire moves. You don't do any trades. You don't do any any shit like that. So you draft a big team, right? This is 18 rounds. The draft is 18 full rounds. You start one quarterback. You start two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end, and one flex play, okay? So it automatically starts the best guy at each position. So if you draft seven wide receivers, it will start the top three wide receivers that week for you. So it's not really a big change in terms of where you're drafting players, in my opinion. Um, but what it does do is a guy like Lamar Jackson, like the reason that you fade quarterbacks in one quarterback leagues in regular season long leagues is because you can get really good options later on in the draft. And if they bust, you can always hit the waiver wire because there's a lot of guys available. However, in a best ball type format, you don't have the luxury of dropping guys, right? Like if I faded Lamar Jackson and I went with Josh Allen and like, I don't know, Big Ben at the end of my draft here, like Big Ben's elbow flares up or he's in a walking boot by week six or something, you don't have the luxury of picking up another guy. So while the quarterback position in regular season long leagues, one quarterback leagues gets a little spicy there because you're able to fade them and able to pick them up on the waiver wire. If there is a problem, you can't do that here. So I've definitely come around to the fact that Lamar Jackson is probably a, a better pick than he is a worse pick early third round. Uh, and I love that even more so in best ball. So let him put up his 25, 30 points a game for your best ball lineup. And I promise you, you will not re regret that. Whereas on the flip side, you might regret a guy like James Conner going there. You might regret a guy like Juju. You might regret Chris Carson. Now, Chris Carson, Chris Carson, what are we doing with Chris Carson? He seems to me to like one of the best value picks at running back this year. And I think more often than not, he's probably going to go a little bit later than where he gets picked in best ball. Again, these drafts are the sharpest drafts I've been in by far. I've done a lot of startup drafts this year. I've done a lot of dynasty drafts this offseason. I've done mock drafts within the industry and whatnot. The underdog ADP is without a doubt the sharpest that I have been with, been around. So you're not getting a lot of guys at value. It's more so like get your guy and and that's how the lead, that's how the drafts are going to play out. Chris Carson at 310 I think makes a lot of sense because he's going to get so many touches this year. And he's missed most of training camp, but it was due to a personal issue. He's coming back from the hip fracture, which is, of course, the biggest concern when it comes to a guy like Chris Carson. And when we look at playerprofiler.com, we'll go to Chris Carson. They have the injury stuff on the bottom of each player page. Let me move this around for you. So y'all can see. Yeah, make sure you are following me at Nick underscore BDGE on Twitter at Nick Ercolano on Instagram. Uh, so Chris Carson, obviously he's been a beast. Uh, here is the injury rating for him. So this is this is what concerns most people, and it's and it's rightfully so to be concerned about it. Uh, I'm going to get back to him in a second. We're picking in two spots. So we started off with Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, Chris Godwin. I think that's a solid team. We're rounding it out, and I'm almost like ready to throw up Mark Andrews here and get a fourth-round pick to solidify the starting guy at each position. But I think there is a ton of value at wide receiver still, and I'm probably not going to end up taking Mark Andrews, even though I might, depending on if Woods, Terry, actually, there's just so many good players here. As you could see, like in the beginning of the summer, uh, the argument was like, go running back early because there's so much value in the middle rounds of drafts at wide receiver. But that's because these guys, Woods, Cup, uh, Terry McLaurin, ooh, we're moving all over the place. My screen's on drugs. Shout out to my screen. Uh, Terry McLaurin, Tyler Lockett, DK, like these guys were going in the sixth. Marquise Brown was going in like the seventh round. So you could really take advantage of that mid-round wide receiver ADP. But again, underdog, sharp. It ain't happening no more. It ain't happening. Sharp like a knife, baby. This is fucking machete ADP. Machete B ADP. That didn't fucking work. Okay, so we're sitting here. We're sitting here deciding between Mark Andrews, Terry McLaurin, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. I love all four of these wide receivers. Actually, I don't love Cooper Cup, but I feel like there's a possibility I'm definitely wrong about Cooper Cup this year. 
But y'all know I cannot fade my man's Terry McLaurin. Just I don't know if y'all saw that practice clip. I'm not I'm not one to hype up practice clips, but god damn. But gosh darn. Terry McLaurin just running just running butter smooth routes. You got machete ADP combined with Terry McLaurin butter smooth routes. There's not a better cocktail to down on a Thursday afternoon. There just ain't. There just ain't. So I take Terry at the 4-8, and now we've got Chris Godwin, Terry McLaurin. Love that wide receiver stack. Back to Chris Carson, though. So you've got him coming off the, the hip fracture in week 16. That is a, a, a concerning injury, to say the least. Piled on to his hip sprain, his shoulder sprain, his ankle sprain, all the injuries that Chris Carson has dealt with already. His injury probability per playerprofiler.com. This page is available on every player, okay? We have real analytics and doctors doing the work behind here. Factors in physical characteristics, injury history, and projected touches to determine the probability of missing one or more games due to injury in a given season. Number six among all running backs. That's a high number. His fragility rating is actually number 12, which is still very high, but it's a little bit more of a dip, um, which is looking at the position to determine the likelihood of getting injured irrespective of projected workload. So, we're a little bit worried about that. He missed it with a personal issue. Supposedly, he's fine in terms of the hip, and supposedly he should be ready to go, and he's going to be handling as many touches as he could possibly do so while staying healthy. So I feel like Chris Carson is, like, honestly, a more talented version of Leonard Fournette. He is a more talented version of, like, all the guys that we want to get volume in the third round. And he's on an offense led by Russell Wilson. So they're going to have plenty of scoring opportunities. So Chris Carson is a guy that I'm not targeting necessarily everywhere because there's real risk to be had. But I think at the end of the third round, if you miss out on running backs early, he's a guy that can give you definite RB1 upside. So we have McLaurin, then Mark Andrews goes off the board right after me. You hate to see it. And we have Le'Veon Bell, bro. We just had a, a, a ridiculous report come out about Le'Veon Bell. We're going to hit up the Twitter sphere for y'all. You know, we like to be all over these places in mock drafts. Uh, who was it? Who's a, yes, Stefania Bell. So there was a report that came out of Jets camp today. Uh, she quote tweeted it. I don't know where she put it. I think I put it in Discord. But basically what happened was like um, Adam Gase said that Le'Veon Bell was suffering from a, ha a hamstring injury. And I'm on the clock. Hold on. Okay, I'll see. So Tyler Lockett falls back to me. You absolutely love that. I love Darren Waller, but we can get him either next round or the round after that. I like Ronald Jones, too, here in the fifth round. I think he's going to get all the work there in Tampa Bay. So I'm going to go with Ronald Jones here, even though I think I have Tyler Lockett ranked above Ronald Jones just in a raw vacuum. But considering the wide receivers you can still get next round, like the Will Fullers, the Devontae Parkers, the Tyler Boyds, compared to the running backs you can get in the next round, I would, just from a team standpoint, a team makeup, we're going to take Ronald Jones here. And David Montgomery was on the board too. I didn't really see that, but he's someone that I would have considered there as well. But Savannah Bell tweeted out, she quote tweeted a report from Jets camp. And the report basically said, um, they asked Adam Gase why Bell wasn't practicing much. And he said, because he did, he pulled his hamstring or something. They asked Le'Veon Bell the same question. He said, no, I didn't. I'm healthy. And he was frustrated by the lack of practice time that he had. So there's a huge dis. I mean, there's always been a disconnect between Gase and Bell. He hated the signing from the beginning, and he didn't want to play him. So now he's stuck with him, and now it seems like he's really looking for alternatives and alternative running backs to give touches to for the offseason. Like, they want to lighten his workload. I don't know what else you guys need to hear, but Bell was purely a volume play last year. He wasn't good. He was purely a volume play. They have a shitty offensive line. I know they've upgraded, but they have literally five new. Talent-wise, they're better. But they have five brand-new offensive linemen starting for them in week one. So that's going to take some that's going to take some real practice to get that group together, right? Continuity is a big thing, especially in a year like this. So um, I just, I, there's so many red flags around Le'Veon Bell. Then the report's coming out like Michael P. Ryan broke a 70 yard run. There was legit another report right after that that said uh, Frank Gore is the best running back in camp. Someone messaged it to me. Like one of the beat reporters was legit. Like Frank Gore looks like the best running back in camp. They're going to give touches to other people. Le'Veon Bell in the fourth round is an egregious pick, guys. I'm telling you, you can look back. You can flag this clip for all you Bell believers and come come back to me afterwards, okay? So Bell there is 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 a, is a problem for me. We're seeing Marquise Brown go off in the fifth, Tyler Lockett in the fifth, Devontae Parker in the fifth, Cortland Sutton 6-1. I want to touch on Devontae Parker, and my stance has been the same pretty much throughout the entirety of the offseason, and it all surfaces around Preston Williams. It all surfaces around whether Preston Williams is on the field or not. Preston Williams is not ready for week one, or he's on the pup, or he's less than 100%. 
I'm going to be buying into Parker and Mike Kosicki. If not, then I will not be buying into either of them. Mike Kosicki is just wildly inefficient. He's completely a volume play. Parker's a better actual player at his respective position than Mike Kosicki is, but there's a chance that Preston Williams is actually the wide receiver one there. And I got some inside sources down in Miami, okay? And Preston Williams apparently looks wildly good given the timetable that he returned from the ACL. So I made this mistake last year with a guy like Cooper Cup. My favorite part of fantasy, legitimately, as like someone that you guys follow and listen to, my favorite part about fantasy football is looking back at the takes that I made last year and learning, looking back at the bad takes I made and learning what was wrong with them, like what I did wrong, which way I looked at it that made it wrong, you know, like, so I, I think of Preston Williams now, and I look back at the Cooper Cup situation, where Cooper Cup was a baller, tears his ACL midway through the season. The next year, I always say we want players two years removed from the ACL, not one, because it takes the timetable is nine to 12 months to recover from it. And then you have the mental aspect to it. But all reports all last offseason, we're talking about Cooper Cup looks 100 percent better. He looks back to 100 percent. He's faster. He's he's more agile. He's you know, he's just better. And I was like, I don't believe it. We have the scientific timetables. So I've come around to the fact that younger players can recover. And if only if, if the only reports we're hearing about how good a guy is looking and how dazzling he is in camp continue to roll out then there's probably something to it and that is the mistake i made with cooper cup so i'm looking at it differently this time around with preston williams he's a young stud wide receiver that i think will be much bigger of a factor than i had initially anticipated and that's just something i have to pivot from because we hear new reports and again i have uh i got some sources down there in miami who says he is definitely 100 percent, and he is looking absolutely perfect uh, ah, you motherfucker randoms. You motherfucker took Tyler Boyd. That was who I was banking on. And uh, I will take... I already have a quarterback, so that's nice. I don't have to use a pick there. Give me all the Darren Waller. Give me every bit of... Da oh, wait. Did I... Oh, no. I didn't take a tight end yet. Beautiful. I thought I took Mark Andrews and I was going to double up on tight ends. I'm getting uh, egregiously high on the Oakland Raiders. It's, 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 it's a really, really big problem. So... On the app. So this is one of the cool parts about Underdog is not only do they have the website, obviously, and typically I only draft from the app, but to do a screen record, of course, I have to show you guys uh, the screen. I can't do it on my phone. Oh, you show bookmarks bar. Yeah, let me clean that up. Um, on the app, what you could do is if you go over to the drafts thing on the bottom, then you click completed on the top right, and then there's a little button that says ownership on the top button that says ownership and it shows you the ownership percentage of players which is super cool and i'm just getting out of control because i have a top five player in ownership percentage on oakland in every position Derek carr is my single highest owned quarterback tied with deshaun watson and of course like a lot of things go into it like how much money went into the draft how your team is made up like obviously Derek Carr versus Deshaun Watson is not equal because you have to get Deshaun Watson. He's usually the guy that falls the, the latest of the quarterbacks. Like you'll see him going in uh, of the top tier quarterbacks. And there you go. Perfect. So you have Deshaun Watson's the only guy left. You already had Lamar, Patrick Mahomes, Kyler, Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson go off the board. So Watson is that last quarterback in that tier that tends to fall. And that's why I have a lot of shares of him because I look at the top six guys, not the top six, but the top two are in their own tier. And then you have those other four where I think they're pretty much in the same tier as having a very similar ceiling and floor to the, the elite guys. So of those four, whoever drops me, I'm fine taking. And that's why I own a lot of Deshaun Watson. But Derek Carr is tied with him for my most owned quarterback. Josh Jacobs, I have a 25% draft share, which is tied for fourth most. And then this is just out of control. Um, I have Hunter Renfro as my most owned wide receiver. He's going to be the slot there. He's going to be the slot. Him and Derek Carr have fantastic chemistry. And then I have Darren Waller as my second highest owned tight end. Jared Cook is my single highest owned player in the entire underdog atmosphere, which is probably a problem. See, this is why I wish I didn't take Lamar Jackson kind of now because Deshaun Watson falls there at seven and I might stack them up. Actually, no, they have the same buy, so I'm not going to stack them up. Shout out to me. First time I realized that I have two guys on the same buy and I didn't pick them because of that. Let's go. Already have the tight end, have some running backs. So right now I'm looking at, all right, we're going to put some guys in the queue. So I don't, uh, we're going to go Julian Edelman over. I'll take Julian Edelman there. It's extremely underrated right now. Uh, again, only guys that had more targets than him last year, Allen Robinson, Julio Jones, Michael Thomas. I think there's going to be a real camp. Like he's one of the only actual pieces of that offense that's been a consistent. 
And uh, had James White fallen to me there, I might have actually taken White over Julian Edelman because they're kind of in the same boat. Like, they're going to be game-planned into every New England Patriot game. Like, that's the way they run their offense. And uh, you've heard really good reports out of camp from Cam Newton and just the chemistry that Edelman and Newton are building. And we don't, we have no idea how that backfield is going to shake up. But we do know for sure that James White has a really significant role there. And he's had it for the last three, four years, and it's not changing. So, um. So yeah, I'll, I'll take I'll take Julian Edelman there gladly as someone who's going to put up, you know, a floor of six to seven catches weekly. So we are a little bit thin at the running back position. So this is probably when I'm going to start. See, this shit is so sharp. Like, just a couple of weeks ago, you were able to get Coleman tenth round, Breda, Zach Moss tenth or eleventh round, Philip Lindsay tenth round. I'm I'm almost like thinking that I none of those guys get back to me in like ten picks in the middle of the eighth round. So if you're if you're if you're in competitive leagues with dudes who are going to be all over their shit, this is absolutely the number one place to be drafting. But but we got tons of resources out there that can help you overcome these vicious machete like ADPs. One of them, one of them is playerprofiler.com. I use this all the time. They have advanced analytics. This is the page I was showing you with Chris Carson. You could literally look up any page. And they have all of the metrics. They have all of the statistics. You can go to the game logs. You can go to the previous year's game logs and show everything that you need. Yards created, snap share, all that shit. But, but just like us, just like us, just like us. Um, sorry, I just got a text message. This happens. I hope you guys didn't see that. Just like us, they have a phenomenal draft kit. Okay. I support other people's draft kits that I think that I think give value and companies that I think brand very, very, very well. And there is not a company I think does it better than Roto Underworld, but their draft kit is awesome. Okay. So they are like all the aesthetics to this draft guide are incredible. Okay. So it's simple in the sense that you could find everything in one spot. A lot of the times, you know, uh, one of the problems I see in fantasy is that like, Companies try to sell you this package or they try to sell you these numbers. I'm going to I'm going to minimize the socials. So if you haven't followed me yet, please do so at Nick underscore BDGE on Twitter at Nick Ercolano on Instagram. And the links for underdog will be in the description. Y'all can draft with me if you use my promo code BDGE after you deposit. So that's going to go away so I can actually talk to y'all now. Their draft kit which I'll get back to after I make my pick because I know I give you guys a lot of anxiety because I always be missing my draft picks. So what we're going to do is put a couple guys in the queue. We got Matt Breda. We've got, why did you just exit my queue? Uh, Philip Lindsay. We have Chase Edmonds. Oh yeah, I didn't talk about Kenyon Drake. So Kenyon Drake left practice with a walking boot and they don't seem concerned whatsoever. And I got this, I got a tweet that asked me, there you go, Matt Breda just came off the fucking board, so I can't even grab him. Really like Jalen Rager, but I would take it around discount and grab Deshaun Jackson. Uh, so I'll, I'll be looking at Philip Lindsay. I'll be looking at Chase Edmonds. I'm, I'm probably going to go with Lindsay here. I just think he's like too good of a running back not to make his way on the field, though I do think Melvin Gordon takes all the valuable touches there. I have been a, lowering a tiny bit on Gordon, so I'm going to go with Lindsay. I think I could probably get Chase Edmonds in the round later, and there are actually other guys. Typically, you don't see a lot of guys that you love at the running back position this late, but like Boston Scott, Damian Harris, DeAndre Washington, Adrian Peterson, Jarek McKinnon, and Justin Jackson are all guys that I have been pretty heavily targeting in the later rounds of drafts. I love Clyde, but I, I definitely think DeAndre Washington probably uh, fits into like an eight touch role. And in that offense, eight touches could easily equate to 10 to 12 fantasy points as your RB4 or five. We love that. Adrian Peterson, fucking get all the hype you want for Antonio Gibson and then Bryce Love, but Peterson's going to finish the year with 200 touches. It's just going to happen one way or another. We're going to hate it. It's going to be inefficient. It's going to be ugly, but it'll happen. Justin Jackson's going to be the 1B to Austin Eckler. Again, he's not handling 20 touches a game. Justin Jackson's going to get 10 touches a game. I could You could still love Eckler, but back to this, back to this. Okay, so here's the thing with their draft kit. It's, it's extremely aesthetic and it's extremely simple to use because like I said, all of these other brands, what they end up doing is offering you 75,000 different things and then you get there and you're overwhelmed and you're like, okay, like I don't even know what to look for. I don't know what tools to use. I don't know what I'm doing. What they do is they break it down into two things. The extreme cheat sheet, which is basically their rankings on steroids and then they have the team insights. So you can go to any team page and look at how they break down the teams and what the projections are for them. But the extreme cheat sheet, one, awesome because it's extremely customizable. You could print it. You could download it. If you're an Excel fucking nerd, get in there. 
Um, but you can go PPR, half PPR, standard, two quarterback flex, and it will change the positions for you. And one of the coolest features on it is that you can cross players off your list if you're in the middle of a draft, right? So you don't have a lot of websites that offer something like that. We are on the clock. Let's get biked. Jalen Rager falls to me at there. Um, so we only start two running backs again. We start three wide receivers. So I'm thinking that I take Rager here because he's probably – actually, I like Rager. I like Ruggs. I even, I'm even kind of warming up to Jamison Crowder a little bit. Though I don't love him in, in anything outside of full full PPR. So I, I'll stay away from Crowder unless he falls to me at a value. And they took Rager. And that was who I was going to take anyway. Shout out to the Q. First time you're not going to have to hear me yell about getting auto-drafted from the non-Q use of my stupid fucking brain. Cool. Okay, so back to the kit. Uh, the coolest part about this shit is just that it's all here. And they have auction values. I know a lot of you guys play in auctions and you ask me. I do not have auction values. Uh, I do not have auction content on the site, unfortunately. Neither do I have a IDP content on there. So this is a place you can get auction content. Now, any player you go to, right? Like we want to go to Chase Edmonds. We want to see where where his ass is at. He's got him at the 101. All you got to do is hit this little arrow and boom, pops up a beautiful, beautiful little page all in one. Like you don't have to go anywhere for it. It's got the auction value. It's got his bio. It's got his stats, fantasy points per game last year. It's got strength of schedule for this year, as well as a write-up and a video outlook for him so if you're in draft day you're in the middle of your draft and you're just like oh fuck like i kind of like this guy but i don't know much about him this is so easy you just type the guy's name in you draft him and then you could check him off the list right like bing bang boom i just drafted not chase claypool but there's chase okay y'all get the point uh this is one of the coolest draft kits man like i i personally i'm obviously working with them this year so i didn't have to buy it but i bought it last year before i was working with player profiler and y'all could do the same just go over to playerprofiler.com forward slash draft kit and they have the cheat sheet, which is it, it just it's just the easiest thing to use in the middle of your draft. Like if you didn't prep, it's got the rankings literally laid out for you that you can cross out and it's got the write ups in the videos. And we got some big dogs that did the videos for some of the write ups in there. So uh, we, we got we, we got the brand on brand there. See, that's a collab that Supreme needs to learn from. Do y'all feel me? Okay, so we took Rager. We took Rager, Rager, Rager. Jared Cook, my boy, goes after him. And we are about nine picks away. Let's see. Actually, my rep from uh, Underdog just texted me. He said, we are running a promo. Sweet out promo that you can big piggyback your code on if you want to quote it. Let's do this together, guys. Let's hold hands. And this is how business is run. He texts me to do some shit, and I'm like, yes. He asked me to jump, and I say, how high? How high? What do you mean my love for David Montgomery might be for nothing? I don't even really love David Montgomery. David Montgomery was carted off practice today. Coach Nagy will speak to reporters soon. Woo! Okay, so I actually had someone read. I don't know if you guys follow Brett Coleman on YouTube. He does really, really good like film breakdowns. Uh, so I would go follow him. And he was like, he was telling me how Cordell Patterson is actually going to be super involved. He's been working with the running backs and stuff. And I'm like, David Montgomery just seems like the safest pick for everyone. And everyone's so bought into him being like a really good floor play in the fifth round. I'm like, how can this get fucked up? How can this go wrong? Because when everybody's on something, more often than not, that's why we fade the public, more often than not, shit goes wrong. And I'm like, what What could be the possible outcomes? And then I'm like, Ugh, this kind of makes sense that Cordell Patterson will be really fucking annoying. Maybe he takes the goal line work. Maybe he takes six carries a game and three receptions a game. But now that David Montgomery is carted off the field, hmm, what happens here? What happens here? What do they have in the depth chart over at Player Profile? Let's look at the running backs for the Chicago Burrs. Chicago, what you doing? Running back, David Montgomery, Tariq Cohen, Obviously, he's still not going to take that much running work. Ryan, Neal, Nail. I remember him from last year. He's like a tight end, kind of converted into a running back. 6'2", 234, so he's he's, he's a big girl. But college dominator, 37.4%. Uh, college target share, 10.2%, 76th percentile. 84th percentile weight adjusted speed score. So if they give him a chance, I mean, we're not going to be surprised why he would do well in a role like this. But since they have almost no depth there, let's look at the other guy they had on here, Artavis Pierce. Four five two sixty third college target share and college dominator and so the thing I the thing I like about college dominator is that it kind of shows you whether or not you're good at football. Like if you didn't rack up yards and dominate in college, and that's just like the percentage of rushing yards and rushing touchdowns you had, 
uh, in college for your college team that probably tell like, wh- how are you not going to dominate in college and then come in and dominate at the NFL level for the most part, right? Obviously there's context behind everything, but that's kind of the way I look at it. All right. So we are back on the clock. Let's see what wide receivers we got Deshaun Jackson there. And I already have, I already have Rager. So the smart thing would have been a, a fucking fantastic, uh, stack would have been Wentz eighth round, Rager ninth round, Deshaun Jackson, 10th round. But we're going to go Deshaun Jackson anyways. I think on a weekly basis, one of these, if not both of them, are going to eat. They're probably going to be the top two targeted wide receivers on the Eagles team. And now we got five wide receivers, some with upside, some with floor, some with game-breaking ability. So I really actually like that stack right there of Rager and Deshaun Jackson, even though it would be about 5,000 times better if I had Wentz as well. I haven't even looked at quarterbacks that went with Lamar Jackson, and that's another you know luxury of taking a guy like that that early tight ends i took darren waller and again i fucking love darren waller on monday's video i broke down the must own tight ends video and darren waller was on there and he's the only mid-round tight end that i will be targeting actively in drafts this year if you want to know why you're gonna have to go watch that video what else do we got on twitter 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 all right yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, so go go cop the player profiler draft kit, obviously. But if, if you want even more action, like I was looking at some of the reviews this morning. I woke up in a good mood because I go on BigDogsDraftGuide.com, the admin access part of the draft guide, and I just see all these reviews, man, and it makes me want to cry. Simply purchasing the draft guide and reading it, my junk grew three inches taller overnight. I was already well endowed, so this is actually creating some problems with the Oh, the Mizzou's, the misses. I like that. We haven't even drafted yet. I already have to go out to buy loser jeans. All right. So we had like a ton of testimonials that I was like, damn, I didn't really know y'all was fucked with, fucked with the draft guide this way. So we've got the two best draft guides in the industry between myself and player profile. I would suggest you cop both of them. Skirt. All right. Um, so we're about to get back on the clock. And some of my running backs that I really like are still here. Jarek McKinnon is more of a hype play, in my opinion. He's someone that you can get in the 14th, 15th round because we don't actually know if he's going to get touches. But if he does, he's got a higher ceiling than a lot of these guys. And we have Mike Williams dealing with the shoulder injury, so his ADP is going to fall pretty far down. We have Brandon Ayuk, who's dealing with the hamstring injury. His ADP is going to fall pretty far down. And uh, then we have these running backs. I, I, I really like Justin Jackson, man. Like, I'm telling you, he is going to be used in a capacity in a capacity that surprises a lot of people. So I'm going to go with Jackson, and now we have four running backs. I probably only need to take one or two more. What are the guys that we like here at wide receiver? Cam Newton would have been a nice stack with Julian Edelman, actually. Even down at 11th, like you don't need a stack to, to draft Cam Newton because he's you know a running quarterback, of course. I Yeah, like Mike Williams is probably off my board right now with that shoulder injury. Brandon Ayuk, I don't hate him if his ADP continues to fall, but at this point, like if, if Ayuk and Samuels are both going into the year very injured and they're both going to be like 13th, 14th round pick, give me Debo Samuels 100 times out of 40. Curtis Samuel, I'm, I'm kind of here. I was never a guy that got high on Curtis Samuel, but right now is is a, a place where I could probably buy into Curtis Samuel again. Let me see what they say in the cheat sheet for Curtis Samuel. I don't think I've read up on him for this. There was a time when Curtis Samuel versus DJ Moore is a legitimate debate. Yes, it was. So Moore broke out, obviously, and Curtis Samuel did not. Now, 54 receptions, 627 receiving yards. Despite finishing 52nd in receiving yards, he was 11th in the league in total target distance. Obviously, Kyle Allen and Will Greer were absolutely miserable. He's getting targeted down the field at an, an insane rate. Uh, which tells you that the opportunity was there. Now Teddy Bridgewater coming over has actually been like a, a pretty good, a pretty good uh, deep thrower, man. If you look at the numbers from last year, if you look at the efficiency, he's not getting as much credit as he should, uh, as he should be. Deep ball completion percentage, fourth in the NFL, forty six point seven. So he was pretty damn accurate. Now you have play action percentage, completion percentage, number two overall, which is really good because you've got this guy Joe Brady coming over from LSU, and they use play action a lot. It's a really easy way to disguise the run versus the pass, and it keeps defenses on their toes. Accuracy rating number two overall. So Teddy's being slept on a little bit, which vice versa makes Curtis Samuel slept on a little bit. However, they do bring in Robbie Anderson, who is the deep threat. So I'm not going to say that Curtis Samuel is going to get the same number of total air yards or total target distance that he did last year, but but he could be a lot better of a player with an actual uh, accurate quarterback there. So I don't hate Curtis Samuel as a later round pick as well. Tony Michelle is just an egregious pick. Don't be doing that. So we're just drafting injured players now, huh? I, Golden Tate, 
like that pick here. Preston Williams, again, he's a guy that I, I'm starting to target later on in drafts if I didn't already take Devontae Parker because the reports are glowing. Okay, so back to David Montgomery. Back to David Montgomery. Um, I mean, if it's a serious injury, they have to sign someone else. They, you know, they, Off the top of my head, you could think of a guy like Devonta Freeman. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the most likely scenario, and that would be do, do not, do not. If Devonta, Devonta Freeman was already washed last year, if Devonta Freeman goes to Chicago behind a terrible offensive line and a terrible offense, like, oh, God. Yeah, don't, don't, don't tweet at me. Don't ask me about Devonta Freeman, please. All right, let me look at that underdog tweet. Sorry, I forgot I was going to do that. Uh, where is this tweet? Best ball mania promo incoming. Clear your schedules. We love Minshew, but don't do this. It's a league ruiner for the next 24 hours. If you complete a best ball mania draft and don't pick Minshew in the first round, you will get a free entry into best ball mania. Retweet this tweet and reply with your username to be eligible. Uh, I'm not even really sure what the promo is here. Well, I know what the promo is, obviously. You get a free best ball mania draft if you enter a best ball mania draft and don't take Minshew in the first round. I might do it and just fucking take Minshew in the first round. That's how we roll. All right. Um, so those running backs are still on the board. Let's see what the tight end action is going on here. So we have Darren Waller. I, I am really of the thought process that Darren Waller or uh, Rob Gronkowski is literally going to be in a committee. It's going to be a th- like a three-way committee between himself, Cameron Brait, and OJ Howard, and it's just it's just nothing I want a part of. So we're gonna grab Chris Herndon here because reports are absolutely glowing out of New York Jets camp about Chris Herndon, and everything we wanted to happen last year with Chris Herndon, I feel like is about to happen this year. He is uh, extremely underrated athletically because we don't have his combine numbers, so we haven't been able to pump up his page on player profiler, of course. But we know going back to his days in college, he's extremely athletic, and he did break out as a rookie. Like the receiving yardage total he had as a rookie were big time numbers, big time numbers considering tight end rookie breakouts and last year he dealt with injuries dealt with the suspension like it was it was it was just a waste of a year but now he's back completely fully healthy ready to roll and I'm, I'm all aboard Chris Herndon as my tight end too as a high upside guy so with best ball mania so we're gonna go to underdogfantasy.com and best ball mania is uh this one million dollar prize pool so if y'all are some high stakes players this will be fun for you they do have a, a little bit of a limited uh prize pool as well for you know 20 percent of the price five dollars is a lot of fun I've, I've done a couple of those but best ball mania million dollar prize will guarantee 25 dollars entry so what they're doing is uh what they're doing is if you enter this for 25 bucks they're going to give you a free gameplay for a best ball mania entrance so 25 dollars to get a free 25 dollars entrance if you don't take gardner Minshew in the first round so what i want you to do is if you do take advantage of that what's going to happen is after you uh, deposit on here, right? You, you sign up on Underdog either through the app or uh, on underdogfantasy.com. After you deposit, after you deposit, you are going to see a, uh, oh no, we don't have, well, you're going to see a page where it says like, were you referred by anybody? Uh, partner code or referral code or whatever. If you click partner code, you'll be able to write in BDGE there, right? It lets you know that, lets them know that you came from me. It lets, it lets me know that you're supporting me as a creator doing these drafts for y'all. So on the partner code page, on the partner code box, throw in BDGE. And then when you enter Best Ball Mania, go follow us on Twitter. Go follow Underdog Fantasy on Twitter. Go follow uh, me on Twitter at Nick underscore BDGE. And in this thread, in this thread, make sure you go retweet it uh, and throw our usernames in there. Your username on there as well as mine. And they will hook you up with a ticket for the next day. We are bike on the clock. And we started a run there. After I went off with Chris Herndon, we saw... Gronk go off the board. We saw Blake Jarwin. We saw Ian Thomas. That like next tier of tight ends, and I think I got the best one in that tier. All right. Do we need to go with the quarterback here? I'm going to fade quarterback just because I don't have enough time to look at it, and we're going to go with my boy Preston Williams. Again, again, very trusted sources. If you trust me, trust what I'm talking about in the source game. All right. Preston Williams is bike. Preston Williams is bike, and he's ready to roll think he has a legit shot to be the wide receiver one there even though they paid Devonte parker to be that but left practice day with what is believed to be a groin strain optimism is he avoid a serious injury i think that's gonna probably be a week-to-week thing that lingers and david montgomery officially off my board i'm about to go take him out of my rankings I'm about to go do it right damn now and if you want access to my rankings the easiest way to do so 
is through monkeyknifefight.com. They are sponsoring our draft guide this year. They are sponsoring it. Monkeyknifefight.com. Promo code BDGE. Everything's just promo code BDGE. All the shit I talk about, just fucking throw BDGE in there, all right? Monkey knife fight. Oh, I am fucking absurdly dumb today. I didn't put a period in any of these things. Monkeyknifefight.com. When you sign up and you deposit money, right? You, you'll do a sign up page. Then when you go to deposit the money, you'll throw in the promo code BDGE. BDGE. Again, these links will be in the description. And as soon as you do that and play a game on here of $2 or more, right? We're going to be winning a lot of money this football season because I'm going to start playing games on here with y'all on Monkey Knife Fight. We are going to deposit with promo code BDGE. You play a game. They will email me letting you know that, letting me know that you did it. And then I will email you instructions, access to the draft guide, which is beautiful. It is finalized it is out there on the web right now and it's got everything you need from dynasty stuff to season long stuff to the all fade list our rankings our consistency charts dr morse's injury guide everything you need for 2020 fantasy football is in the draft guide and sponsored for ten dollars thanks to monkeyknifefight.com what else do we got people oh renfro in the third he knows i love renfro i've been getting him in the 15th of everything it's unbelievable it's unbelievable That's just rude. Okay. Um, so we have Dallas Goddard dealing with the hairline fracture in his hand. I'm not too nervous about it. Apparently, it's not that big of a deal. He could play with like a cast on for the next few weeks and probably be okay by the time the season kicks off. I probably need to grab a second quarterback here. Oh, I love J Jared Goff and Ryan Tannehill. I think are two of the best values. I think Teddy and Gardner are also fantastic values. But for as much as we like a guy like Jared Goff or Teddy Bridgewater, Gardner Minshew, like we like everyone's getting excited about Minshew, but let's not like act like we're drafting him as the QB 12 or anything, right? Like there's still solidified guys like Jared Goff who are going to be top five in the league in pass attempts and already have proven, you know, 45, 4,700 yard passing upside. So I'll still take a guy like Goff and Tannehill over Minshew, but Minshew is one of those guys that you get at quarterback 20 and you're super excited about it because the team is going to have to pass a lot. This kid runs the ball a lot. And, uh, and he's just exciting. He just want to root for Minshew. So we'll be looking at a second and probably final quarterback. If I could pair Tannehill or Goff with Lamar Jackson, I will probably stay with two. If I end up getting uh, Teddy Bridgewater or Minshew, I'll, I'll think about getting a third one. I've been, I have so much Derek Carr. It's actually sickening. It is sickening. I was never a guy to tout Derek Carr. Now I can't get enough of him. It's, it's gross. Mm, probably should have took another running back with one of the other picks because now the running back position gets ugly. Who do I like down here? So y'all know I love Anthony McFarland, but but there are there are times where you have to you have to look at what you're saying unbiasedly and say, listen, it, it might not happen this year because all reports out of camp are that James Conner is the future workhorse again as long as he's on the field, and if something happens, Benny Snell is the number two go to guy. Now, I love the talent of McFarland. Y'all know this. But you can't always push the talent into the opportunity. We learned our lesson with Justice Hill last year. Again, I love getting shit wrong. And I love learning from what we did wrong last year. And Anthony McFarland and Justice Hill are causing me deja vu. So I've started to pull back on my shares of Anthony McFarland. He was at like 44% of my ownership share um, like a week or two ago. So that was out of control. I already own enough of him. But now we have guys like... Anthony McFarland, uh, so I'll throw him on the queue, but I won't take him until it's like the 17th round. Who else do we like? I don't hate Ryquel Armstead, but there's a chance that he just throws up zeros week to week. Sean McCoy could have an actual pass-catching role in that offense. I've been taking a lot of Brian Hill, too, and I've been taking a lot of Benny Snell as well because of the reports coming out. So I've been trying to diversify the revenue in that Pittsburgh bike field with everyone pretty much but James Conner, which is probably going to end up being a mistake. But these quarterbacks are still here. So we are going to pair a running quarterback with a passing quarterback who has gone for over 4,600 passing yards in each of the previous two seasons and multiple rushing scores. Don't sleep on it. Don't sleep on Mr. Goff. You know, it's funny. I was watching. I didn't watch the new Hard Knocks yet. By the time you watch this, I probably might have already. But in the second episode, uh, you know, it was Jared Goff was hitting those golf balls and he was hanging out with his girlfriend and another dude. And then the other dude, there was like a little pop up on the bottom of the screen that said Jared's roommate. And I'm like, what the f why the fuck is Jared Goff living with a roommate? He's got like 100 million in the bank. He lives in Hollywood. He's got a girlfriend. Why not make his girlfriend the roommate? 
So I tweeted that out. I was like, why the fuck does Jared Goff have a roommate? And then uh, the dude, Nick, uh, Nick from Underdog Fantasy, my rep at Underdog, was like, yeah, I met, I actually met Jared Goff at the Super Bowl last year. And he basically said that it's like him, like Tyler Higby. I'm not sure if Higby still lives there, but like him, Tyler Higby, and like a bunch of his boys from high school, they all live in a house together. And he's like, it's legitimately just the house from Entourage. It's just like a, it's just like a crazy celebrity LA type mansion where they just like party and hang out and are fucking boys. So we are officially normalizing living with your boys into your mid twenties and thirties. That's not going to resonate with anybody but me, but I'm all for it. I'm here to start that movement. Normalize living with your fucking boys after college. Jared Goff's doing it. Why can't I do it? Right? So, uh, yeah, so Jared Goff lives with his boys, and it's pretty cool, and I respect that, so I'm going to continue to draft him. And now you're seeing that little quarterback run, so I'm glad I went with Jared Goff. And then we can look at the wide receivers. I have six of them already. I'll probably end up with seven, possibly eight. And one guy was not drafting in a redraft. There's a, so I'm really high in the Oakland passing game, but I think most of it's going to funnel through. It's going to be splash plays from Ruggs. It's going to be possession plays from like Williams and Brian Edwards. And I think Waller and Renfro and Jacobs are going to be the ones that actually eat in this offense because Derek Carr is not a downfield thrower. He likes to hit the guys around the line of scrimmage with accurate pinpoint passes. And that's where Waller, Renfro, and Jacobs' strengths will be. However, we got this news about Tyrell Williams who I think I might have been confusing Tyrell with uh, Tyrell with who's the other wide receiver that I was talking about having a shoulder injury, Mike Williams. I'm not sure. I think they both have the same thing. Okay. So Tyrell's is much more serious. He has the torn labrum. He will attempt to play through the injury. That is just like, that is every types of red flag that he's going to be lingering throughout the year. He's going to miss games. He's probably going to end up having surgery midway through the season. So with Tyrell Williams out, that actually leaves a, a giant hole in their receiving core for an outside receiver. And I think Brian Edwards is most likely the best pure outside receiver on the uh, Las Vegas Raiders right now. So that, um, so that makes me like Brian Edwards a lot more now in the 15th round because there's a chance that he becomes like a 60% snap player. When they go three wide receivers, Renfro is going to play in the slot. Uh, there was a report that came out that like Ruggs is going to play the slot. But again, yo, guys, it is it is absolutely clickbait season. If you read the actual fucking article, if you read the article, it says that, yeah, we're going to move a lot of players around there. You know, Henry Ruggs might move into the slot a little bit. And then they just take that clickbait title and they say Henry Ruggs is playing the slot. Like, guys, if you see something that's like, oh, that's really exciting, but also kind of weird. Make sure you actually click the article and put context behind it. Ruggs is not going to be playing in the slot. Maybe he'll move into the slot a little bit, but he's not their slot receiver. It's going to be Renfro. What's going to be interesting is what happens in two wide receiver sets now that Tyrell Williams is undoubtedly going to miss time and be limited and be less than 100%. I was under the assumption that it was going to be Tyrell and Henry Ruggs. But it might be Henry Ruggs and Brian Edwards. And in that case, like that's going to be an interesting duo, exciting rookie wide receivers that if they're on the field together, have no choice but to get a decent amount of targets. So I'll take Brian Edwards down here. He wasn't someone I was like drafting the 13th, 14th, which I think a lot of people started to do. But once he starts falling 15th, 16th round with the Tyrell Williams injury news, that's when we start to look at uh, players like that. And then we have Mike Williams. I think his is a little less significant. He has the AC sprain in his, in his shoulder. Uh, Shoulder could miss the team season opener. Hate that. We don't find injuries. They will find you. If you're going into the year less than 100%, going to be a problem. So one guy that's going very underrated right now, uh, and I picked him up in all of my dynasty leagues this morning, and I'm pretty fucking pumped up about it, is this guy, Jalen, Jalen, I think, I believe his last name is Guyton. Jalen Guyton. He is the Chargers receiver, undrafted, but look at the athletics on this dude. Look at what he did. At the combine, four 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 speed at six one two twelve, eighty ninth percentile speed score, great burst score, great agility score. His yards per reception fifteen point four tell you that he is a downfield playmaker, right? That is the same kind of player that Mike Williams is. Now, didn't play much last year. Again, undrafted free agent, so it's always going to be. This is not like a slam dunk guaranteed pick by any means, but I think he's absolutely a guy worth stashing in your dynasty leagues because his athletic profile is through the fucking roof. Now, again, we look at Dominator, we look at college target share, and that usually tells you whether or not a guy is good at football, especially playing in a college like, where is North, is North Texas? Um, what conference is that in? I'm an idiot. University, 
conference. NCAA Conference USA. Okay, so it's not a Power 5 conference, which means if you can't dominate in that conference, you're probably not great at football. But I'm willing to kind of, you know, look past that and stash them as, you know, the Dynasty rosters are 28 people deep, you know? So guy in a guy, you don't find uh, guys with that type of athleticism all the way at the end of your drafts like that. So I think he's a, he's a guy, he's been running with the ones now that Mike Williams was out. And uh, he can be like the Travis Benjamin-ish type player there that we saw at Rivers for a while. So go snag guy. And I'm probably not really taking him in best ball drafts or anything because, you know, there's a chance that he's not even the wide receiver three. Like he doesn't actually get on the field. But any guy that's like the 26th, 28th player on your rot, why are you drafting Darius Geis? Why in the whole fuck are you drafting Darius Geis? And randoms, randoms snipe me on the Renfro snack. And then he fucking snipes me on the Derek Carr stack. This is, that's, this, I'm, I'm, whoo! I'm upset. I'm, a, I'm big upset. So we're going to take our fifth running back here. Who do I have less confidence in? Benny Snell or Brian Hill? I have confidence that if Benny Snell, if James Conner is healthy, he's going to be the workhorse. I, one, don't have confidence that Todd Gurley is even healthy right now. I don't have confidence that he's even going to be the workhorse if he is healthy or if he is, you know, playing his 50% of snaps. This is... I really, despite the report that came out, you know, Dirk Cutter, oh, Todd Gurley is going to get 15 to 25 touches a game. Like, this is that report with Tavon, Tavon Austin two years ago was getting 35 touches a game, according to the Dallas front office. Coaches don't look at numbers like that. They just, like, say shit. You think the, the average of that, 15 to 25 touches, 20 touches a game. If you think Todd Gurley's getting 320 touches this year, you're out of your fucking mind. You're on acid. You're on LSD. You smoke the Jeffrey, all right? Todd Gurley ain't getting the workhorse touches there. I can't wait to be wrong on Todd Gurley, and he's like the number eight running back, and I look like a fucking fool with all my Brian Hill shares. But I, I've been, in most of my drafts, I've been getting Atlanta backfield shares just because I hate Todd Gurley. I don't hate him as a person. He's actually probably like a really fucking cool dude, but I'm just, I just, I, nope, just nope for fantasy football. He's just a big nope for me. Who else do we like at wide receiver now that we're kind of done at running back, even though we shouldn't be because that's not a great running back core. But we've got seven wide receivers. Since we got Lamar Jackson, I'm not worried about getting a third quarterback. Two tight ends, Waller and Herndon, I think, can get the job done. So I'm actually going to go with a light sandwich stack here. And by that, I mean light bread, whole wheat bread, right? So we got lightness on the top and the bottom, quarterback, tight end. It's a little bit fragile. Normally, I'd go three at one of those positions, but I'm going to stack up. Um, I'm actually going to grab Benny Snell here because I need the help at running back. I really do. And then we'll go with the last pick of a wide receiver and make it eight there. And there are a few guys I like here. I mean, there's been so much. I don't where I don't understand where the hype from Steven Sims comes from. Like, wh what is Steven Sims? Who is Steven Sims? He's like him and Kendrick Bourne. Like, they, I feel like they're fucking twins and they just don't do anything but continue to get hyped in fantasy football for whatever fucking reason. Like, guys, you don't want no one in this passing game outside of Terry McLaurin. And, and I actually have picked up this other dude. Another bench stash in Dynasty Leagues. Logan Thomas getting hella hype out there. He's going to be the starting tight end for the Redskins. Pretty damn good athletics. I know he's old, 29, but, I mean, we've seen old breakout ages. He was a he was a converted something. I forget what position. He was playing something else before he turned into a tight end. He might have been a quarterback, to be honest with you. I don't remember. But really good size, really good speed, and uh, supposedly he's in line for the starting tight end job in Washington. So, not that I love anything to do with the Washington offense outside of Terry. But in Dynasty Leagues, again, Logan Thomas is a good stash back there. But uh, yeah, take all the Steven Sims you want. I liked Russell Gage a lot because he was a guy that got pretty good snaps last year uh, and started to produce and see like significant targets once some of the other players were hurt. Like Muhammad Sanu was gone, Austin Hooper was hurt, um, and uh, Calvin Ridley got hurt. So we look at some of the the snap game, the snap uh, charts. You can see over the second half of the year, starting week eight, 61%, 62, 50, 82, 76, 46, 76. So he became a uh, half to three quarter time player here in Atlanta. And he was commanding targets, man. 9, 5, 4, 10, 9, 4, 6, 6, 13. So he had four games over the last half of the season of nine or more targets. Like that's probably higher than a lot of dudes that I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. But as a slot receiver here, I think there is opportunity for Russell Gage to throw up a bunch of like four for 55, maybe a touchdown game every one of three games. And as your 17th or 18th round pick, I really like Russell Gage in best ball. Skirt. Who else do we like here? I would have loved like KJ Hamler here, but he pulled a hamstring and it's supposedly pretty significant. So we're going to be off the rookie here. Kendrick Bourne, our fucking boy, right? So good. So good that he's never surpassed 480 receiving yards. 
Just so good. Like, how can you pass up 30 for 358? I just don't know how you do it. But, but, but I get the argument because Ayuk is hurt and Debo Samuel's hurt and Kendrick Bourne will still end up with 372 receiving yards this year. So, no. So, fucking no. Cole Beasley going under the radar, huh? Eh? 778 and six touchdowns last year. Bring in Stefan Diggs. The, Diggs is kind of a deep threat. I, I, I don't hate Cole Beasley down here. Uh, I tend to kind of fade guys like Traquan Smith here because I feel like there's a good chance he just ends up putting up zeros for so many games. I know the Podfather really likes Traquan Smith, and uh, he likes the upside he brings, but I'm, I don't tend to really go with like high upside guys all the way at the 16th, 17th, to 18th round. I'd rather just get points. Points! Points! Because I don't want zeros there. Um, Andy Isabella is a guy that's intriguing as well. I've taken some last round flyers on him. Oh, Scotty Miller's my fucking boy. That's who we're going with. Scotty Miller. I love Scotty Miller. I think he will open the season as the slot starter for Tom Brady. And that will be a nice role. Even though Godwin plays mainly slot. But on three wide receiver sets, it'll be Evans and Godwin on the outside. Scotty Miller on a 4-4-4. 40-yard dash. Best comparable to Tyler Lockett. The dude was a beast in college. 84th percentile college dominator. 75th percentile college target share. Broke out at age 19. 88th percentile. Yes, it was at Bowling Green. But fuck it. We're going to smoke that Scotty Miller green. And he will be my last round pick. I've been getting a lot of Scotty Miller late. Because he he goes so far down that everyone kind of forgets about him. Because his ADP is down at 215. Um, But I really like that. I really, really, really like that. I should probably draft. Cordero Patterson. I should honestly, I should draft Devontae Freeman because he's probably getting signed by the Bears. Who else doesn't have a team over here? Are there any other free agents? No, huh? They got nobody. Who else was like a back in the last couple of years that was like semi irrelevant? Blah Powell, they can go with CJ. And no, fuck no, they, can't. they ain't drafting CJ Anderson. All right, so we're going to go with Scotty Miller. We're going to round out the draft there. Okay, so my team, my full team, my full teamy is, you could see from the five slot, we have Derrick Henry. Uh, I'm going to pop this out for y'all. We have Derrick Henry, Chris Godwin, Lamar Jackson, Terry McLaurin, Ronald Jones, Darren Waller, Julian Edelman, Philip Lindsay, Jalen Rager, Deshaun Jackson, Justin Jackson, Chris Herndon, Preston Williams, Jared Goff. Brian Edwards, Brian Hill, Benny Snell, Scott Miller. I really don't think I missed on a pick until the Brian Hill pick. That is like the my, the problem with me and these Atlanta running backs picks are they're just, they're just completely emotional. You don't draft with emotion unless it comes to your backfield. And in that case, we got problems. All right. That is the entirety of this video for y'all. So I will leave you with these parting words. One, don't yell like I just yelled. Two. Make sure you sign up on Underdog Fantasy, y'all. It is the best place to practice. The best place to practice for your fantasy drafts. The ADPs are on. They're on, they're too on point. I don't even like. I on, fuck. All right, I gotta be transparent. I don't even like drafting on here anymore because they're too good. There's no value to be had. But they're really fun and they are really really good prep. So when you go on there and deposit ten bucks, make sure you throw BDGE in the partner code. And of course, they have that promo running right now with the buy one best ball mania ticket. Get one absolutely free when you tweet out them. And don't forget to check out the Player Profiler Draft Kit. Just go to playerprofiler.com and you can click on the Draft Kit up there. It is a phenomenal tool to have during your draft because you can look at the Extreme Cheat Sheet and it's got everything there. And you can cross off the players and it's got all the different customizable types of leagues. My, my throat is on fire right now. I have to be done with this video. I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you did. And send me a screenshot using the promo code if you do. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Damn, that was a lot of rhymes. I'm out. Peace.